Hi, and welcome to Southern Outfitters talk today on sleeping systems. We're going to talk today about sleeping bags and the various conformations and way that we can uh, set them up and to get the best out of uh, the sleeping system. Um, you can look at a, a sleeping bag as a, a simple system in that it is a bag that holds either down or some sort of insulation fluff which keeps you warm overnight and allows you to get a good night's rest. However, it can be quite a bit more complex than that to make sure that you actually do that, get that good night's rest. So if we work basically from the basic bag up, this is a, a fairly straightforward Mac Pack <clears throat> 700 loft um, bag. It's a, um, it's a mummy style bag, so that means it tapers down to a, a, a nice wide footbed in here. Or a foot box. It has a hood, it has a collar which cinches around the neck with a couple of pull ties and um, the, the head or the, um, the, the hood can also cinch down as well over the, over the head. <coughs> this reduces the amount of air which is moving in and out of the bag um, during the night and reduces the amount of heat that you'll lose. It also has a trapezoidal um, cut on all of the baffles. So these here are filled individually with, um, with down. And each of the, the, the baffles are then tilted so that if they fill up in the night, you don't get areas which are um, not filled and going to cause a cold spot. <coughs> Same with these longitudinal baffles in the front here. <coughs> I think it's a fairly common way of doing um, bag construction nowadays. Now earlier I mentioned that it was a 700 loft. So the loft uh, refers to the filling power of the down. The higher the number the better it is basically. This for example is a 700 loft. I've seen um, bags down to sort of about 400 loft. <coughs> the one behind me here this is an 800 loft plus bag and it's a very good um, bag but I use it for different purposes. This is my go-to bag for standard um, hunts and tramps and um, when I want to have a, a moderately lightweight bag um, that is uh, nice and warm and can be combined with other techniques to keep it, make it even warmer. <coughs> Some of the things to look for in a, in a bag, make sure that the zips run easily because some of them will have a tendency to get caught on the inside lining, especially the cheaper bags. They'll use this sort of taffeta lining, which doesn't, um, nothing more frustrating than being really cold and trying to hop into bed and uh, getting caught in the taffeta lining. This one here has a, a thicker, almost a, a, um, a nylon uh, in here to help with the, with the running of the zip. <coughs> Another um, uh, technique is to put your finger in behind the zip and just run it up in behind and that'll help the zip to stop catching on things. Usually going down it's not a problem, just coming back. And of course it has an inside handle as well um, so that you can pull it up from the inside. <coughs> Other features on a lot of bags that some people aren't that familiar with is there's usually a, uh, a stash pocket in here and in all my bags I keep a pair of uh, earplugs for those nights when you have snorers in the room. So they stay in there all the time um, and it makes a tremendous difference. So this is the latitude right standard. So when you come to buy a bag they actually come in different sizes. So you will have a generally a standard or a large, sometimes an extra large. Because I'm not, um, uh, I'm about five foot 11 or 5 foot 10 thereabouts. Um, I'm, I'm a standard size and I'm also right handed so I've gone for a right handed zip. Some people prefer a left handed zip, I prefer a right handed zip. Just personal preference. Um, in terms of care there's always a panel on the inside of the bag somewhere which will tell you how to care for the bag. In this case they've just printed it on it's starting to get a bit hard to read. Um, but we'll talk about care of the bags a bit later in, down the track. So that's the Latitude 700. 
Now a couple of other features is that these here are for hanging bags. So if you pop your, your hanger, these here, pop through the hanger on either side, and then you can hang the bag in a, um, in a uh, wardrobe. Some of the lightweight bags um, dispense with these sorts of things because they're not really hugely necessary. They're nice to have, but they're not a huge to have. This latitude, for example, has a much narrower um, foot box and it has no zip on the end, as you can see. It's just the way that they manage to keep the weight down on some of the more uh, high-end alpine type bags. Right, so let's have a talk about ways um, that you can store them. Most of them will come with a, uh, a, a stuff sack like this. So if you pop the, the bag into here, it compresses it slightly, but then you can keep it on the shelf and it, it won't do too much damage if you need to the down. The best way is always to, to hang them vertically in a, in a wardrobe, in a dry place, um, and out of the sun. Um, it, they will last for literally decades if you uh, look after them. And in fact, this one here, I've had for decades. This is a Mac Pack Sapphire from about 1989, 1990 perhaps. And I wash it regularly and look after it. And it's still going pretty well. It's a bit grubby now, but um, it's been on a few missions, so I'm not terribly surprised. It has all the same features as the other bag, except it's got a thicker collar on it. This was designed for alpine climbing and for um, you know, particularly cold environments. It's also got a reflex outer, so it's a sapphire R with the reflex outer, which is a little bit like a, a form of Gore-Tex. So it's a breathable fabric, which is also water resistant or water, basically waterproof. If you spill something on it, it'll run off. <clears throat> this again has the um, uh, the trapezoidal um, baffling and the longitudinal baffling over the chest. It's been a great bag and that is now, goodness that's nearly 30 years old and still going strong. So the next one I'm going to show you is uh, a way we're going to start talking about how we can start layering up um, these bags. I'm going to show you a very very lightweight bag which is designed for virtually tropical climates. So this is a, another down bag, extremely light, and it's again, it's a Mac pack. It's a Mac pack um, escape, escapade, sorry, 150. I think they also used to do a thing called the snowflake, which is kind of similar, but um, this is great in sort of temperatures where it's only getting down to, um, you know, about sort of 12 or 15 degrees overnight. So a very, very lightweight sleeping bag, weighs virtually nothing, but it's a great little lightweight bag. It actually fits into this, into that there. So it's also got a Pertex outer, um, and which keeps the weight down. So really there's very little weight in that. And the reason that I have it is not so much for summer camping, but I use it as a way to start layering up my bag. So on trips where um, I'm in particularly cold weather, if I'm up above the bush line hunting tar, or um, I'm in a tent in, in snow, especially if I'm having to camp on snow. I put this inside my other bag, and that makes an enormous difference, as you can see already just with the fill, makes an enormous difference to the warmth of the bag for very, very, very little weight carried. It's a, um, it's a good system. This is a silk liner, and silk liners add a few degrees to your bag, depends on the individual as to how many degrees, some say up to five degrees, I'm not entirely convinced about that, but it'll certainly add a few degrees of warmth to your bag, and it's made out of silk, you sit inside it, it actually makes it a bit easier on some bags to, to move around inside the bag somehow I find. Um, and it certainly does make the bag a lot warmer, but it also keeps the bag um, a bit cleaner. So it's a lot easier to pull one of these out and um, just 
longer that than it is to put the whole sleeping bag through on a, uh, with a wool wash and uh, or with down wash I should say um, and uh, yeah it's a lot more convenient again weighs very very little so again if you are wanting to go somewhere slightly co you know cooler if you're doing a, an autumn hunt or whatever or a um, above bushline trip in summer um, this and this may well be quite enough your next option is this thing here called a reactor, a reactor bag. So the reactor is um, a, made by Sea to Summit, and it's a um, uh, the Reactor Extreme. It's good colour. You won't lose it. But it's kind of a fabric. It's like a polypropylene type fabric. Um, I don't know if it's actually polypropylene, but um, it might be a polyester perhaps by the feel of that um, and this makes um, it certainly will make the five degrees plus of warmth difference to a bag it makes a huge difference um, and of course if it's a warm night you can just sleep in this as well by itself so again you can put this inside there and sleep quite comfortably this plus this plus that uh, it will be virtually polar in, in, the, uh, in, the, the, in the ability of the bags and of course you can layer up or layer down as you need. So we're talking about a sleeping system this is the system that I use um, if I'm doing a very lightweight solo um, somewhere for a hunt or for a, uh, for a tramp in the backcountry uh, especially if I've got uh, a lot of weight to carry with camera gear and, and um, my rifle and other hunting equipment. So this is a, a, a Katmandu XT series bivy bag and um, combining up a bivy bag with a sleeping bag uh, makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways because this acts as a vapour barrier and a waterproofer uh, for your bag. So we noted, we talked before about this bag and this bag here has got that waterproof membrane built into it um, but it is quite heavy uh, and uh, I don't always want to have that it's, it's just a little bit too warm for, for a lot of occasions so this system here gives me the best of both worlds I have my sleeping bag which I can sleep in uh, if I need to in a, t in a hut no problems, just sleep in the sleeping bag if it gets cold in the hut I've got my reactor bag which I can put into it. On some occasions, uh, on some huts that get very cold, um, I have uh, actually bought my bivy bag and slept inside the bivy bag inside the hut. Inside the hut. Um, and the other thing is that it would actually often, in, in some damp huts, will keep your down bag dry. There's nothing harder than trying to keep warm in a down bag that's damp. The down just clumps up and it reduces its insulation factor quite considerably. So this gets around it. You can also use this um, a, a bivy bag like this, take out your, um, your rescue orange um, bag that most people will have in the tramping packs and use this to keep your gear dry as well. Um, it, Probably wouldn't do that all the time because it would be quite hard on it, but for long tramps we're trying to keep those weight, that weight down as low as possible. It gives you the option to carry a bivy bag as well as um, you know keeping your equipment dry and you can dispense with something else. So it's multi-purpose. So in the last video we talked about uh, using a bivy bag with, in conjunction with a sleeping bag and other layering systems, both in huts and <coughs> outdoors. Today we're going to address the um, other issue um, of how do you insulate yourself from the ground. You'll, you'll actually lose um, the, the majority of your heat um, in terms of, of a fraction from your contact with the ground. Not so much in a hut, especially if you've got a, you know, a warm uh, sponge mattress, that's obviously not going to be an issue, but if you're on the ground outside or on snow, uh, that will be the largest proportion of heat drain that you can um, that you'll find. So, on the bottom of a bivy bag, they have a, uh, a waterproof, quite a thick membrane, which uh, will certainly um, 
have a small degree of insulation, but um, really only from moisture going back up into your bag. So that really doesn't provide anything. The next sort of layer of, of traditional things that people have carried have, have been foam with sponge roll mats. Now, th these are okay, um, but you really need two of these to have any real thermal efficiency. You will get cold on one of these, uh, and there are better options nowadays. However, they are cheap, so if you are if you're as tough as a um, as an old nail, um, I'm sure you'll get away with um, one of these. They also don't give you a great deal of protection. If you're a side sleeper like I am, you'll find your hips will be quite sore in the morning with these. Then somebody decided that they would put the sponge or put a thicker bit of sponge inside of a uh, bladder so you can blow up the bladder. Now this is of course an old thermarest and um, they were supposed to be self-inflating so you'd open up the valve and the air would rush in. <coughs> Add up a little bit of top up on the, on, from the valve by blowing into it and um, yeah, huge revolution in, in sleeping comfort. Uh, be aware that there is a sleeping side and a non-sleeping side on the thermarest though and it usually marks it. So this says sleep this side with the one with the sticker on it. That's quite important because um, I think one side is slightly thicker, denier, um, so it's more puncture resistant. Nowadays <coughs> we have much, much better systems. You have air mattresses, which are great. Um, they will definitely get you up off of the ground. Um, and they're quite thick, very comfortable. The trouble with a, st a standard air mattress though, a uh, blow up one, um, is that they can become quite cold because there's no, they have a very low R value really. Uh, they will remove you from the ground but they won't re remove a lot of the, the temperature that you'll lose through convection and um, a little bit of, of conduction as well. Mattresses like these, which is a um, a Nemo, uh, Astro Insulated Nemo with lateral air baffles. Basically it's one of these that doesn't have the sponge in it, but it does have down. And as, it, it, as you blow it up, it um, blows up to about this thick, super comfortable. And it is um, also filled with down, or it's actually a, 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 a synthetic form of down, which um, fills in the area and increases the R value of the mattress. This is quite a big one, quite wide, um, it's not the lightest one that's available, but it's long, it's way longer than I am, and it's relatively wide, it's also not mummy shaped, so some, in some ways this is actually better for keeping on the, on the ground, um, because with a mummy shaped one, would keep weight down, uh, it, it's actually quite easy for your legs to, to, to slide off. Again, it has a, a, um, a valve which uh, pops in and out, and you blow it up with this. The difficulty of this one here is that um, to try and blow it up, um, you, you put a lot of air inside it, which can actually degrade in the long term the uh, insulation, especially if they use down in there. This is a synthetic fill, so it's probably less of a problem, but the primal loft is quite good. This is an extremely comfortable. Uh, the Nemo is a very, very good brand of of outdoors materials. Lastly, this is an X-bed mat, or SIN mat, ULM. So that just, uh, it's a medium size, and it's tiny. This includes the inflator. So, if I open this up, there's a little pocket in there, and it's got uh, um, some patches and glue and so forth, in case you pop a small hole in it, which is not unlikely with these, because they are quite thin wool. Very, very light, very, very small, but they're not nearly as tough as, say, the, the base of one of these. And of course, not nearly as tough as the firmer rest, and you can't put a hole in one of these. So that is an advantage with a sponge mattress. <coughs> so this one here is slightly narrower than the other one, um, but again, it blows up to a quite a good thickness, and it is um, very, very warm. The advantage of these ones is it does have quite a bit of insulation built into it, so a high R value, um, but it has two inflating and deflating valves. So one's an inflation one, so you would uh, inflate through here, 
and then to deflate, you deflate through that valve. And there's no, there's no one-way valve in the defla deflation valve. On the inflation valve, there is a one-way little valve in here which opens and closes as the air goes in. You can blow it up um, by mouth, or you can use one of these. And again, this thing here weighs virtually nothing. You fill it up with a bit of air, roll it over the top, and then you put this into here, and you squeeze the air in. And that'll inflate the mass mattress with, with uh, only atmospheric air in there rather than large amounts of air from your lung. So that's a really good option, and um, doesn't weigh very much, reasonably tough. If you combine this, put this inside your, um, your bivvy bag uh, with your sleeping bag and other options in terms of what we talked about in the previous video about layering up that bag, you will keep warm in any circumstance virtually. So there are, you know, that's the, um, that's some ground mat options for sleeping bags. We're going to talk briefly about um, packing sleeping bags <coughs> for transport and um, how to make sure that you can, uh, uh, you know, keep their life as long as possible. So when you're packing a sleeping bag, <coughs> A lot of the, 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 the better bags will have a seam sealed roll top bag. Some of the others will just have a, a toggle top, but the better, better makes will have a, a proper waterproof seam sealed bag. When you're putting the sleeping bag inside the bag, <coughs> always go from the tail end first. Now what this does is, as you're, you're stuffing the bag into the bag, um, it doesn't put too much pressure on, on seams and things. You can actually blow seams out if you really try and shove them in. If you do go the other way, the air all goes to the top end and there's a lot of pressure that occurs that way. So what I like to do <coughs> is pop the tail end of the bag in first, hold the bag with one hand, and then kind of just punch it in. And I rotate around the bag as I punch in. Rather than if you roll a sleeping bag or a down-filled sleeping bag, um, it can actually cause uh, um, cold spots in the long term. So you want to try and do this random packing. Because every time you put it in, you'll be putting it in a slightly different way. Again, I'm just punching in with my fist. Once you get to here, that collar sometimes is a little bit difficult to get back up. So you just got to pop your hand back in and rotate this collar back up. And once you've got the collar all the way back up, there's an internal drawstring, certainly on the mat pack ones anyway. So you can see now the internal one has been drawn drawn tight, and then the external one acts as a dry bag. So you roll the top of the dry bag over at least two or three times. Get rid of some of the air out of there, and then just clip it over on the top. Now that sleeping bag is virtually waterproof and can go into your pack. <clears throat> when you're using synthetic bags, some people will tell you uh, it's best to actually fold the bag and then roll the bag and put it away. Um, it, there's a little bit of argument as to which is the best way for doing that. I, I've tried it both ways and I find that the, the folding flat and then rolling is, gives a lot better length of life to your bag. Um, but I've only had about three synthetic bags, so most of my other ones are down ones. Anyway, that's just a quick bit of uh, care and maintenance for uh, sleeping bags, putting them away. So just to summarise the last uh, points, here are all the different options for bags that I can take with me um, to keep warm at night and also to have uh, insulation from the ground. Uh, I've excluded the, uh, the, the Thermarest and the foam pad because they're just, there are better options out there now.
and I don't take them any longer anyway. So again, this is my uh, MacBook Latitude 700, uh, which is a go-to bag if I'm not too worried about weight for carrying in places. I've got a fairy down bag which is no longer made, it's the Adventurer right hand zip and as you can see it's considerably smaller in packed weight and also weight generally um, than uh, the MacPack 700 and this is an 800 plus um, uh, loft down. Now that's probably why it's able to keep its size because it can put the down to the loft a lot larger than the um, 700 gram down can loft, so you need less down for uh, the same insulation factor. So that's let's say I'm going on a on a on a on a tramp where I'm going to be uh, wanting to keep weight down to a minimum, but I might have to go from the valley floor, camping at altitude, and then returning back to the valley floor and staying a hut. This is what I bring for that. Next thing is I've got a couple of mattresses here: the super comfortable one and the super light one. Now on this trip, I'm going to want a super light one because, um, but it's still a warm one because it's going to have to be above the, the, the bush line at one point. So we'll put that with that. And the heavier one which I'd take on a helicopter trip, or again if I was going in somewhere where I wasn't too worried about weight, I'd bring that. Because I'm going to go above bush line, I'll bring the bivy bag, and also because it'll give me another layer um, that I can either use as an emergency bag or I can um, use to keep um, my bag dry and warmer in the hut. This is assuming, of course, a, a, winter, a winter hunt, a winter trim. On this occasion, I'm not going to be going alpine. Um, I'm not going to be spending a lot of time in the um, high alpine area, so my secondary um, lightweight bag I'm going to keep with me. Um, I'm going to pop here and I'm not going to take it with me. I've got a choice of either a reactor or a silk liner for the rest of it. Now again, I'm trying to keep weight down. Um, the weather forecast, let's say, doesn't look that great. It looks like it might get quite cold up on the tops, so I'm going to bring the reactor bag. And there's my safety solution. So that gives, covers all of those bases. And by thinking through the process of where I'm going, what I'm doing, what's the time of weather, what's the time of year, what's the weather going to be like, I can adjust for that. And within this, if it's hot, I can just use that. If it's moderate, I can just use that. If it's, um, if it's getting a bit colder, I can put this inside that. And if it's really cold, this, this and this all inside of each other. And um, I'm covered. So it's a slightly different way perhaps of looking at um, sleeping facilities, but that's what I've come up with over the years and it works well for me. Uh, and it gives me a covering of, of, of options for every sort of circumstance. So I hope you've enjoyed those videos and um, if you have any questions feel free to leave a question in the comments below and please subscribe. Thank you.